Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Notion Hub and in this video, I'll be showing you the most important tips and tricks for your Vivo X90. By the way, do check out my video on the best features section where I'll be talking about all the features offered by this phone. With that said, first let's check out the navigation gestures. Now once you enable the navigation gestures, you can swipe from the bottom of the screen to go home. You can swipe and hold for recent apps. And you can swipe from the left side or the right side of the screen to go back a step. To trigger Google Assistant, you can swipe diagonally from the bottom left corner or the bottom right corner. Just swipe it and Google Assistant will trigger. Besides all these gestures, you can also quickly switch between applications by swiping left or right on the bottom bar just like on iOS. Next we have split screen mode. Now split screen mode allows you to use two applications at the same time. And there are multiple ways to open or start split screen mode. First we can do it from the recent apps page. Just go to the recent apps page and click on the app icon and select open split screen mode. Then the current application will open up in the top window. Then you can select the secondary application from the list below or you can go to the home screen and then select the secondary application. Another way to start split screen mode is from the notification toggles. Just go to the notification toggles and click on split screen and you'll enter the split screen mode. The third way is using a gesture. On this phone, we have a three finger gesture to quickly open the split screen mode. On any compatible application, you just need to swipe up using three fingers and you'll open the split screen mode. Very few phones out there offer this particular feature and it works really well. Next, I'm going to show you different ways to take screenshots on your phone. First way is using the buttons. You can just press the volume down and power button both at the same time to take a screenshot. Next, we also have the three finger screenshot gesture on this phone. It's enabled by default. If it doesn't work, you can just enable it. Now this is how it works. Once you enable this feature, just swipe down using three fingers and you'll be able to take a screenshot. It's very simple and it's very handy. Next, I'm going to show you how to take long screenshots. To take a longer screenshot, first you need to take a regular screenshot. You can either use the buttons or the gesture. Now once you take a screenshot, you get a preview and from here, click on long screenshot button and then your phone will automatically take a longer screenshot. Next we have nearby share. Now this feature allows you to share files between different Android devices over Wi-Fi. Almost all the Android phones these days come with nearby share. First you need to enable nearby share on both phones. On your phone, set visibility mode to everyone or contacts. If you're sharing files with someone new, then set visibility to everyone. It'll automatically change to contacts after some time. Now once you've done that, select the files that you want to share and click on the share button. You'll see all the nearby devices on the share menu and just click on the nearby device to quickly share those files or Wi-Fi to the other Android device. Now this feature is just like the share it app, but it's an inbuilt feature that comes on all the latest Android phones. Next we have notification history. Now once you enable this particular feature, all the notifications that you get will be recorded in the notification history place. So even if you accidentally dismiss a notification from your notification bar, you can still find them in the notification history panel. I would definitely recommend you to use this feature. Next we have privacy dashboard. Now this particular feature allows you to see like which application has access to your camera, GPS, microphone and other permissions. And at the same time, this particular feature allows you to see which applications have used which particular permission at which specific time. So you get a complete timeline history and you can easily find out which applications are misusing permissions and from here you can also block those applications from accessing those permissions. Next we have a very important security feature called Appening. Now this is very important if you're someone who often lends your phone to some other stranger or even your friends. Now once you enable this toggle, you will be able to pin applications from the recent apps page. Once you pin an application, you can't go to the home screen, open camera app or open the gallery application. So it improves the security a lot. To unpin an application or to close the app, from the navigation gestures, you can just swipe up from the bottom twice and it takes you to the lock screen and once you enter the password, that application will be unpinned. If you are using navigation buttons, you can press and hold back button and recent house button and it will take you to the lock screen. Once again, you can unlock the phone to unpin the application. Next we have blur recent apps. Now there are some applications that you want to blur the interface in the recent apps page. Let's say for net banking applications, you don't want others to check out your balance details or other information. You can blur those applications in the recent apps page. You can do all that from here. Next we have 
background power consumption management. Now on this phone, apps get killed automatically like most of the time. For some reason, if you don't want some specific applications to be killed automatically, then you can do that from here. Just go to settings, select the individual application and select do not restrict background power usage. Once you do that, this application will not be killed automatically in the background or whenever you lock your phone. Next, we have a quick shortcut to rotate photos. Normally on other phones, if you want to rotate a photo, you have to select the photo, go to edit and then rotate. But on this phone, on the default albums application, you can just select the photo, I mean open it up and then put two fingers on the screen and rotate them manually, clockwise or anti-clockwise to rotate that image. It's a really useful shortcut and I wish others implement this feature as well. Next, we have some brand new photo editing options on this phone. Now, once again, to use this editing options, we need to open the albums application. Just select the application, go to edit, and we have tons of photo editing tools. Out of them all, you might be interested in object eraser, where you can erase some objects in the photo. It is still in the beginnings phase, but this particular feature works really well. Next, we can also hide photos in the default albums application. To do that, just open the albums app, select any photo that you want to hide, then go to menu, and then click on hide. Now that particular photo or video will be hidden. Now to check out all the hidden files on the phone, you can once again go to album settings and go to the hidden section. There's no password protection for the hidden section, but we can lock the entire albums lock itself. Next, we can also check out recently deleted files. Now whenever you delete files in the default albums application, they won't get deleted immediately. You can find them in the recently deleted section. After a few days, all this stuff get deleted automatically or you can also delete them manually from here. Now, if you don't like this particular feature and you want files to be immediately deleted on your phone, then you can disable this feature from the album settings. Next, we have video editing options. Now, this is one of the few phones out there which actually gives us video editing options directly on our phone without installing any third-party applications. If you are a YouTuber or someone who just wants to create some smaller videos directly on your phone, then this can help you a lot. Once again, go to your album's application, select the video, go to edit, and from here, you can actually edit this particular video. You can crop the footage, split it, add extra music track, and do a lot more directly on your phone. Next, we can change the screen refresh rate on your phone. Normal phones come with a regular 60Hz screen refresh rate, but obviously your phone has higher screen refresh rate. Now, if you go to the display settings, we have a section called screen refresh rate and from here, you can change the screen refresh rate of your phone. By default, it is set to smart switch. So your phone automatically switches the screen refresh rate depending upon what you're doing. Now, this can give you the best battery results. But for some reason, if you want a constant high screen refresh rate, you can change it from here. Next, we can also change the recent app style. Now, there isn't any complicated stuff going on here. You can just do a pinch out and pinch in gesture on the recent apps page to change its complete style. Personally, I like the default one. Next, we have dark mode. Now you can enable the dark mode from the display settings or directly from the notification toggles. Once you enable it, all the system UI elements and even some system applications and Google applications change from the default light theme to the dark mode or the dark theme. Here's a quick preview. By the way, we can also schedule the dark mode to only work at night, which can also be pretty helpful. Next, we have default app management. Now from this place, you can change your default phone dialer, default SMS application, default browser, and so on. So if you want to change it, you need to come to this place. Next, we have flash notification. Now once you enable this feature, every time you get a call or notification, your flashlight blinks and gives you a notification. Now this particular feature can be pretty handy if your phone is lost and is in silent mode. Next, we can also display the battery percentage directly on the status bar. If you want to do that, just enable this toggle. Next, we can also display the network usage on the status bar. Like how much you're downloading and how much you're uploading, you can check out all that information on the status bar just by enabling this toggle. Next, I'm going to show you how to disable the lock screen carousel or the lock screen poster. Now, on your phone, whenever you go to the lock screen, do you see a different wallpaper every time? If you don't like this particular feature, you need to disable the lock screen carousel or the lock screen poster from the lock screen settings. And this is how you can do it. Just disable the toggle to have a static lock screen wallpaper. 
Next, I'm going to show you another important security feature. Once you enable this feature, let's say you lost your phone or just misplaced it, then no one will be able to completely shut it down from the lock screen. To turn it off, you need to unlock the phone and then only you can restart the phone or shut it off. Once again, it's a very important security feature and I would recommend you to enable it. So guys, these are the most important tips and tricks for your phone. If I missed out on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video. With that said, this is Nikhil signing off.